What's going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong. Welcome back to another Gear Talk Thursday, a weekly video series where I go over either a new piece of gear or a current one that I'm using that I want to give a mini review on. But since we're going to be focusing on wedding film content for the next couple of weeks, I figure for today's Gear Talk, we're going to be talking about our wedding film kit. That's right, we're going to be talking about the kit that's specific to us and how we use these camera lenses and accessories to shoot our wedding films. By the way, everything that I'll be talking about in this video will be linked in the description box below and it's also available on my kit.com page. So go ahead and check that out as well. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the main camera bodies that we use on a wedding day. We have two shooters. So one of us is rocking the Sony a7R 3 and the other on the Sony a7 III. These are much improved over their Series 2 counterparts. I'm not gonna go over every single improvement. You can actually check out my full detailed user experience review on both of these cameras by clicking up here in this annotation. But just really quickly, loving the dual SD card slots allows us to do uh, redundant video recording so we never have to worry about an SD card failing on us. Loving the joystick right here, which allows us to control the focus point. Um, loving the bigger battery as well. I think this is the most welcome improvement to these Series 3 cameras because two of these FZ100 batteries here will power one camera the entire day. No longer do we have to keep finding outlets and fighting with the photographers and guests to charge our Sony cameras. Aside from that, no more screen dimming when you're shooting 4K, no cropping when you're shooting 120 frames per second, 1080p, better color science, what else is there? Fast and reliable autofocus, and we're loving the low light capabilities of the Sony a7 III. Seriously, if you've been looking to upgrade your Sony a7S II or your a7R II, either of these cameras, the R3 or the 7 III, would be great considerations. Next up, we still have both of these cameras right here, the Sony a7R 2 and the Sony a6500. Really, these are just for like the multi camera angle uh, shoots like the wedding ceremonies and wedding receptions. Generally, um, this camera here would be a wide camera paired up with the Zeiss Bodice 18. And this one right here would be a medium camera paired up with the 24 to 70 f 2.8. So at wedding receptions, we run about five angles. We got two cameras here. And the other two that I was talking about will be paired up with the 70 to 200s to do behind the shoulder shots of the bride and the groom. The fifth camera will be on the gimbal and the first shooter will just run around getting cinematic shots as the ceremony is happening. Wedding receptions, we run about three angles. This one, again, Again, we'll be paired up with a wide angle lens sitting in the corner of the room while we have another camera with a telephoto lens shooting tight and um, a wide camera on a gimbal getting a wide coverage, wide to medium coverage. Next up, let's talk about lenses. So the two main lenses that we use nowadays is the 16 to 35 G Master and the 24 to 70 G Master. The 24 to 70 G Master is our main run and gun lens. We also pair it up with the Zhiyun Crane 2 now, so we're getting multiple different uh, coverages because we can actually balance this on the Crane 2 and use a variety of different focal lengths without having to rebalance the entire setup, allowing us to get a wide, medium, and telephoto coverage. If you're interested in seeing how that setup works, you can click up here for that video. I made a video on best gimbal for zoom lenses on a wedding day, so go ahead and check that out. But this one is mostly gonna be our uh, main lens for all day coverage. We also have the 16 to 35, which I'm using right now to shoot this video, but we like to pair that up on the Crane 2 as well for gimbals to get a MT wedding ceremony shot and a MT wedding reception shot. And also because it's a zoom lens, we can be versatile between 16 to 35 as well. Moving on to our telephoto coverage, we have the 7200 f2.8 G Master and also a 7200 G f4 lens. Now we mainly use these for behind the shoulder shots of the bride and groom during wedding ceremonies. That's pretty much it. We don't really use the f4 anymore after that, but the f2.8, we would use it during the wedding reception, especially when the ballroom is a huge ballroom and one of the shooters have to be far away, but can still get a pretty decent shot from across the room. So we would use the 7200 G Master for that. Next up, we have the 50 millimeter F2.8 macro lens. I don't have it on me. That actually belongs to my partner, Eric. We use it for our ring shots, our invitation shots, and just any detail shots in general. We will put that lens on a camera on a slider and just kind of go left and right on the rings, the shoes, and whatnot. Now, I often get a lot of DMs asking me to make a comparison between the 50 millimeter macro and a 90 millimeter macro. Honestly, we use both. They're about the same to us. 
We like the 50, uh, we like the 50 millimeter more just because it's slightly less expensive and it's a little bit more compact compared to the 90 millimeter macro. Moving on to the Zeiss Bodice 18 f2.8. I also don't have that on me right now because I sent it in for a repair. More on that in a future video, but that's the lens that we use to pair up with the Sony a7R2 and just put it in the back of the wedding ceremony or the wedding reception to get a wide angle coverage. Now that used to be our default gimbal lens on a wedding day, especially when we pair it up with the Zhiyun Crane Plus. But again, since we now are using the 16 35 G Master with the Crane 2, that's our default gimbal combo. Last lens on the list is the Zeiss Bodice 135F 2.8 ultra lightweight telephoto lens. We really like using this uh, for wedding romantics. And I believe I talked about this yesterday, how we have two shooters uh, for wedding romantics. If and when we have two shooters, this would be very effective because um, one shooter will be on a gimbal with a wide angle lens getting wide and medium coverage while the other person is on the 135 getting close-ups and detail shots as those wedding romantics are happening. So great lens for that. Love this thing right here. Next up, gimbal. We like to use this BBC right here, the Zhiyun Crane 2. Again, we like using this with our zoom lenses. Again, more details as to why we like using this on a wedding day is up here. Uh, check it out, best gimbal for zoom lenses on a wedding day. But you can also notice right here that um, we adapted the Manfrotto quick release uh, RC2323 quick release system. Now the Zhiyun Crane 2 uses the Manfrotto 501 plate, which is great if you still use these long plates on your tripods and monopods. But since we uh, converted to these square plates right here, we just adapted the quick release system on the long plate right here, which allows us to switch between monopod, tripods, and gimbal. All right, so let's move on to the audio solution. We got three of these Zoom H1s right here and three of these Aspen stereo lavalier microphones. We just pair these up together, put it on the groom, put it, for the, put it on the officiant during wedding ceremony. Uh, we also use these for letter reading as well. These work great, these work fantastic. Now I know a lot of wedding filmmakers are now using the Tascam DR10L, which is this smaller lavalier microphone setup. Um, but honestly, this has still been working great for us. I know one of this one, of this one here is break-in, so we might actually replace this one with the um, Tascam. But for the most part, these are still working great for us and uh, no issues with them whatsoever. I'm pretty sure a groom sat on this and broke it. He never told me about it, but oh well. Next up, we got this super beat up Zoom H4n. This is our default main audio recorder that plugs into the DJ's board for us to get a clean. We got this super beat up Zoom H. More and bizarre default made. Sorry, my Alexa's acting up. Anyways, this is our main audio recorder that plugs into the DJ's board for us to get a clean audio signal for when anybody, anybody's talking into the microphone. Of course, the DJ will not have the proper cables for you to plug in your audio recorder. That's why we gotta have this variety assortment of cables here just in case uh, you need either an RCA, quarter, uh, quarter inch plug, or an XLR. Now, props to Craig Adams for talking about this on WeddingFilmSchool.com. I just picked up all the cables that he recommended and this has been saving my butt for the last three years. Anytime a DJ asks for an RCA, I have one ready. Any Anytime they ask for a quarter inch cable, I am ready. I have never run into an issue where I don't have the proper cables to plug into a system. So, boom. So for on-camera audio, we use the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus and the Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, we don't really use the audio that gets recorded onto the camera. These are just for syncing purposes. Again, the main audio that we'll be using for the wedding highlights are gonna be the Zoom H1 Lobs and the Zoom H4n. But if we do manage to capture some great ambient sound during wedding prep or uh, first look, we would throw that in in the wedding film as well. But for the most part, this is just for syncing purposes. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to lights. I got this Viltrox LED right here, and this is used for whenever we do macro ring shots, invitation shots, because more often than not, whenever we're shooting prep, um, the bride is usually in a fairly, fairly dark, dark room. So having a little LED panel like this to add a bit of light to rings to the invitation just helps a lot. Sometimes we would have photographers borrowing this light too. So this is a pretty awesome light. It goes from 3300 Kelvin to 5600 Kelvin, a bi-color light to match the ambient 
However, I'm thinking we will be upgrading to, or not upgrading, but we'll be replacing these with the Aperture Amaron LED lights instead. It's these credit card size lights that are also extremely powerful. I believe they're bi-color as well, um, but they charge via USB, incredibly portable, incredibly um, low profile, as opposed to these. These are a little bit bigger and they run on Sony NPF batteries. So creating more bulk and size in our bag, rather have the smaller lights instead. More on that in the future when I get them. Uh, speaking of Aperture, we got the Aperture 120D right here, which we used to light wedding receptions. Um, this is the uh, 120D, so it's about 6,000 Kelvins. We would have to put some gels on it to match the ambient of wedding receptions. But really enjoying this light. Um, you can check out a Gear Talk mini review on this light by clicking up here. But we like to pair this up along with this Boltzen 55 watt light right here. Um, great little lights can be powered by Sony NPF batteries as well. So this would be our main light at wedding receptions. This would be our hair light at wedding receptions. Great combo right here. Next up, got this small HD focus monitor right here. It's a tiny little five inch monitor display that just pretty much helps us grab focus. Loving this little articulating arm right here to adjust the viewing angle of the monitor. It's also powered by Sony NPF batteries. Very universal batteries that powers our lights and um, yeah, powers our lights and powers this guy right here. Um, love the fact that we can also put a LUT on an SD card, plug it in here and have it preview what the LUT will look like on our footage as we're shooting. It's a great way to gauge what your shot will look like and if you need to adjust the white balance or the exposure in any way. So really loving the small HD focus. So for monopod, we are using the Su-Ray P224S carbon fiber monopod. On top of it, we got the uh, Manfrotto X-Pro fluid head. These uses the RC2 quick release plates. Again, we are using this quick release ecosystem right here. This will work on the monopod, the tripod, as well as the crane too. Let's see, uh, tripods, light stands, those are pretty self-explanatory. Those are for um, wedding ceremonies and wedding receptions. Pretty much for any unmanned cameras, we use the um, Manfrotto tripods. For the light stands, the heavy duty one, we use it with the um, Aperture 120 just because it's super sturdy and the lighter light stand for the Kane TV bolts and lights just because those are a little lighter than the Aperture 120D. So as you can probably tell by now, we have a crap ton of equipment that we transport in and out of wedding ceremonies and receptions. So I invested into this rock and roller cart, which if you've been following me on Instagram, I've been plugging this thing to oblivion. Because in the past, we would just carry the tripods like this and row our Pelican and Think Tank cases and just struggling and making multiple trips, but not no more. Not for 2018 wedding season, cause boom, I invested in this rock and roller cart and we're we're just trying, we're just making one trips now. We stockpile the Think Tank cases, the Pelican cases, throw on all the tripods on that car, and we're just pushing it with ease. Honestly, best investment for this year's 2018 wedding season. All right, so let's talk about bags and camera cases that we use on a wedding day. So for uh, the small quick stuff that we need to have fast access to, we would use it in this uh, Peak Design Sling Everyday 10L. We can fit a camera body in here with a lens, another lens that we would need to swap to very often. The loft mic, audio cables, extra memory cards, batteries, you name it. We can fit all the small stuff in this bag right here. To transport the other camera bodies, lenses, and monitors and whatnot, we use the Think Tank Transport, video transport case. Love this bag a lot. This is overhead compartment friendly on airplanes. And another case that we use to transport our lights is the Pelican 1510. All right, so for memory cards, we are using the SanDisk Extreme Pro. We have a couple of 128 gigabyte cards, uh, several 64 gigabyte cards, and we have one 32 gigabyte card for the H4N recorder. So the bigger sizes are obviously for the cameras that we're using and the backup cameras and the smaller one again is for the H4N. And we also are using the SanDisk Ultra 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. Um, the 64 gigabyte would be for the DJI Phantom 4 drone that we fly and we have about three of those for the Zoom H1 right here. I think 16 gigabytes will give you about 20 some hours of recording time on the Zoom H1, way more than you need for one wedding day. 
For drone, we are using the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. It has a one inch sensor size in it, so it gives us really great quality when we have it up in the air getting uh, shots of the venues that we are at or the ceremony site, so really loving that drone. For the ND filters that we use for the Phantom 4 Pro, we are using the Polar Pro filters. Now, speaking of ND filters, I haven't really talked about this yet, but we're using the Tiffin variable ND filters. We have them in different sizes because we have lenses that require them in different sizes. So I believe we have one for 77, 67, and 82, but we also have step up rings just in case we need to adapt the smaller lenses to the bigger ND filters. But yeah, if you want fluid slow motion, I would definitely recommend getting a variable ND filter for those high frame rate shots. But yeah, aside from that, definitely need to have some gaff tape in case you need to tape any cables down or fixing up any boo-boos. Um, a sort of variety of different batteries, obviously for the cameras, for the lights, for the mics, um, cable bags, SD card pouch, oh, Zeiss wipes to clean your lenses in case you got a smudge on it. And the last couple of items on the list is the uh, Razer Blade 14 inch gaming laptop. It's just for us to game whenever there's downtime during a wedding. No, I'm just kidding. So it's our main editing rig to edit our 4K wedding videos. Um, I like using Premiere Pro. I tried Final Cut on the Mac. It just didn't work out for me. And trying to edit 4K on a Mac with Premiere Pro is complete garbage. So I swapped out to a Windows laptop, which is this Razer Blade right here. I can edit 4K like butter on Premiere Pro with the Razer Blade laptop. And what we edit off of is the uh, Samsung T5 portable SSD. It's one terabyte big and you can fit about two wedding projects on this. Great little tiny form factor hard drive that we can take with us whenever we're out traveling and need to get some editing done. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And that is our wedding filmmaking kit for this year's wedding. Let me know in the comments down below what you are using for this year's wedding season. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.